Hey guys, welcome back to this video series. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're talking about a topic that's pretty near and dear to my heart, data-driven storytelling. Now, it's a buzzword. Everyone uses it. It's on every website. It's in every deck. It's in every presentation, uh, keynote, etc. And I'm just as guilty of using the term just as much as everybody else is. But I wonder actually how many people realize and understand the definition of data-driven storytelling. But it's pretty self-explanatory if you think about it, right? It's using data or the action of using data to inform something, some type of content, whether it's a byline, press release, social content, even search copy, things like that. That is, that is what data-driven storytelling is. But I think we often say it loosely. Now, I wanna talk about the dif differences and the distinction between data and an insight because data is just that. It is a number, it is not very actionable. An insight is the discovery or the, the uh, understanding of the data and using it to inform some type of recommendation. And it's very actionable. For example, if I were to say that my Facebook ads generated 15,000 clicks to my website, well, that's a data point. It's, it's good data, but it's just data. But if I were to say that after some A-B testing, we increased our click-through rate by 15% after we changed the call to action creative from blue to yellow, well, that's an insight. It's very actionable. Now, the reality is, is that data is everywhere and many of it is free. Um, it's very easy and accessible to get. Insights, on the other hand, it requires work. It requires human curated analysis. It requires someone to data mine and go through the data and provide a hypothesis or an insight uh, to then make a recommendation. So it, it requires a lot more work and it's, and it's not as quick as uh, just pulling data and export from a Facebook ad, ad group and uh, spitting out the numbers. So I wanna talk about some data that's free and then also give you some examples of how um, the differences between a data point and insights. All right, so here's an example of free data. Now I went to similarweb.com and I wanted just to get some information on, on Wired to understand again how effective it is or how much impact uh, Wired would be if I were to get coverage um, or if I were to do some type of sponsorship or a partnership with Wired. And Similar Web is free. You can literally go to similarweb.com and you can type in any web address and it'll give you and spit out this data. Now, this is all data, right? It's free. It gives you total visits, uh, total engagements, bounce rate, things like that. It tells you uh, referral sources by country, referral sources by uh, channel. You can see that they get most of their traffic from search, uh, direct traffic, referrals, social media, email, etc. Uh, they can give you some, you know, the top referring sites in and the top referring destination sites. So this is all data, right? Now, I'm sure that you can probably get some type of insight if you were to, you know, maybe compare this to, let's just say, a business insider. So I'm just going to type in, well, let's just do uh, Engadget because it's here. So you can see here that, you know, when you compare the two sites, you can start to, uh, you know, make some type of assessment around, you know, who gets more uh, traffic from organic search from social media, from you know paid media, et cetera. And you, can, you might be able to then decide, okay, well, maybe we should spend our time you know, pitching Engadget versus Wired. Now, there's a lot more data that I would recommend and suggest before making that conclusion. So this is great data by Similar Web. I wanted to jump in and dig a little bit more into Wired, the publication, just to see if I can uncover any additional insights other than just data points. Now, before I jump into it, I wanna say, if you're in PR, please, please, please don't ignore the data. You don't have to be a data scientist to use data in a smart way. Uh, you just need critical thinking skills, maybe some Excel skills, and just, yeah, you, you have to have patience and time because it requires you to dig and understand um, why one piece of data says something different than the other. So in this particular analysis, going back to Wired, uh, the first thing I did was an audience analysis to see who reads and shares content from Wired. And I was able to uncover eight distinct audiences, as you can see here on the screen. Now these audiences are clustered based on demographics, psychographics, self-identifiable characteristics, and follower relationships, many times referred to as affinities. Now I wanna quickly drill down on one of these uh, audience clusters, uh, developers. Now you can see here that the developer audience is 79% male, you, pretty obvious. They skew younger, they also like sports, and they read sites like The Verge, Harvard Business Review, and PC Mag. Now we can also see what brand affinities they have, what podcasts they listen to and channels they use. Now these are, aren't necessarily insights, but they're helpful data points to get a better understanding of developers in general. Now let's move on. This next piece of the analysis is based on what I call topical relevance. In other words, what topics does Wired write about the most? Now this trend line is data from January, 2019, 
and you can see here that data and security are the dominant topics of coverage. Now, it kind of makes sense because they're hot topics and there's security breaches all the time, and Wired covers many of that. So you'll also notice that AI and workplace or remote workforce and many other keywords in this data set has some pretty nice growth over the last 18 months or so. Huge spike in April and May, which was a natural result of COVID-19 and you know everyone working remotely. And the chart on the right represents relative share of coverage. So when you take these seven topics as a one data set, 5G accounts for just 6% of that coverage, AI 7%, security 33%, and so on. What this is not saying is that of all wired coverage as a whole, security is mentioned 33% of the time. It's only representative of this particular data set. So as we continue to dig, I wanted to understand how often Wired was writing about some of the top technology companies, many of which here are um, in my area, Silicon Valley. And this data represents what I call unique mentions, meaning after I excluded all the other companies, Google was still mentioned 568 times in 568 articles. And I did the same for each company just to make sure that we were comparing apples to apples. Now, if you double click on Google, this is a topical coverage analysis. So the size of each color coded piece represents volume. So in this case, when Wired wrote about or writes about Google, almost 50% of the time, it's a corporate story or it's about the company, CEO, employees, or other business and corporate challenges. Coming in second was Google Maps, Google Assistant. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to share uh, simply what were the top pieces of coverage driving engagement. And uh, these are the top three articles. And when I say engagement, I mean resonance. And in this case, resonance equals some type of social action, a like, a comment, a share, a retweet, a pin, a comment, or even an inbound link. So the next logical question here is, right, this is great data, but how is it actionable? How can I pull some insights to make some decisions here? So what I want to do is I want to go back to this slide here and just kind of talk through a couple observations that I found. Now, I know the developer audience pretty well. I do a lot of work with uh, you know, B2B companies who try to reach developers. And just to highlight just some data here that I breezed over earlier, um, this is data, I'm going to use my mouse to just hover over this. This is data that is highly useful, right? We can understand what they read, what they care about, what podcasts they listen to, what channels they use, what developer forms they're part they participate in or are a part of. Now, this is all great information that you can then filter to make some decisions, right? You can prioritize your media relations strategy. You can you know, figure out and determine where you want to buy media based on channel usage. Uh, you can do the same thing for developer forms. Many of these forms allow you to buy, uh, you know, uh, display advertising within certain channels. So one other quick insight is what I call topical relevance, which I kind of breezed through earlier. And these are, these are the topics that Wired tends to cover more so than others. And so what I would ask myself is, do we have the topical authority to pitch a story relevant to one of these areas and you know i would start with data and then security because what this tells me is if if wired and the journalists that write for wired are writing about data and security the most well that is top of mind for them right they are they are actively seeking opportunities to write about these topics so i would have to go through and ask myself and then go through an exercise of how i can map my narrative uh, to one of these strategic you know topics that would increase our chances of getting coverage in Wired. Before we close today, I just want to make one last point, and that is you don't have to be a data scientist or even an analyst to use data to make decisions. There's a lot of platforms and tools out there that can give you some level of output that would require you to then kind of dig into the information and then come to some rational conclusion. So somebody like me who failed algebra many times in high school and college and who was afraid of data for many years in my career, it wasn't until I learned how to uh, contextualize information and use the basics and then really increase my knowledge of using data uh, to make informed decisions, whether that is, uh, you know, some type of recommendation around earned media or PR or, you know, paid media segmentation or even, you know, email marketing analytics. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in and, and I would welcome any comments or any conversation. And if you want to talk, and, uh, you know, about uh, data and in, in your journey into understanding data and data literacy, uh, please reach out. I'd be happy to talk to you. And until then, please stay safe and have a great rest of your week. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.